Hello and welcome to the Total Clarity Podcast. I'm Jesse Hyatt. I'm Mike Varley and this is, well, week 53 of our 52 week walk around New York City. That means that we are done. And yeah, we wanted to do a post project, post wedding recap podcast with one of our favorite people, one of our helpers during the wedding and one of our big supporters during the entire project. Mr. Matt Humphrey. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Congratulations, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh my God. Uh, what a feat. Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. It's got to feel you. really good. It, it feels, feels good. Yeah. It also feels like confusing. Like we're only, like what day is it? Wednesday? Yeah. You know, and we finished walking and we got married on just Sunday. So it like for me, I'm a little bit like confused about like, are we still walking later this week? Or yeah. like, what are we do? Like, I'm, I don't think it's sunk in yet. Completely. Discombobulated a little bit. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. And we, I, you know, also dropping off chairs and like reviewing footage from the day. Like everything still, there's momentum still very much going. It's like load out from the event is still happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are not even taking a breath. Because also you have this. That's kind of like tying up right. the loose ends. Yeah, and like yeah, right. totally. Finishing it up. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be editing this this week. And yeah, there's just a little, there's just so many more things going on. I'm not sure when it'll finally hit. Although on the walk over here, I did start getting a little bit, like I was really feeling myself in the space walking <laughs> without like any expectation. Like I saw a picture of a lost dog and I've been taking pictures of lost dogs for an entire year now. Yeah. And I was like, wait. I don't have to take a picture of that. Or yeah. like, I could, but it's not really in the context of what the project was. You know, Are you so taking like, the pictures of the lost dogs because you feel like you're walking everywhere? Like there's a possibility you might see it and you'll have like the photo for reference? That we was part really of it. We were hoping we would find a lost oh, dog. Oh no, yeah. We didn't. We found a couple dogs that we thought were lost and then within like 10 minutes or so, like their owner, they were just yeah. not being paid attention to. Yeah. Yeah. But um but yeah, we were hoping that we'd find a lost dog, but also like we had a couple things throughout the year that we would just notice like repetitively yeah. all over the city. And so we started documenting just a few of those random things. So like Like what, were things amiss and you were like seeing a pattern in like certain neighborhoods? Um well some th- some like that. Some were neighborhood specific, others were like full city specific. So for example, another thing that we take pictures of is or took pictures of is keys like okay. lost keys yeah which surprisingly there's lost keys like all the time like i think we would take at least one picture of lost keys once a week wow. more than that or i more. would say more yeah yeah they're everywhere like full sets or just random like sometimes single... individuals sometimes yeah. full sets yeah. you know with like crazy keychains yeah it's wow. such a bummer yeah. when you find like a full set too like some like a couple of them were like full set like yeah. 40 keys you know and you're like oh man that person like it's either a dog walker or a janitor or like a, a landlord or something and you're like oh my gosh how are they gonna and you like this? pick up the keys and like put them somewhere no, or, like well, call anybody or was it kind of like just walk away you just part of it is that a majority of them are perched okay like it's not like they Someone just drop there like there's somebody with intention put them in a place where you can find them it's Which amazing. like yeah. made me realize like, okay, if I ever lose my keys, I think my first instinct would be to like retrace my step and like look where I may have dropped them. Mm-hmm. But then you also have to look for like, maybe someone picked them up and put them at eye level. Yeah. And then it makes me think too, like if I find lost keys that are in the middle of the, the sidewalk, I might just leave them there. Cause I actually think <laughs> yeah. if someone's like looking, yeah. that's where they'd be looking. Yeah. I feel like you can pick them up and put them on like a fence post or something and like That's honestly yeah. one of the most common spots like yeah. ringed around like the you know like how the fences especially the metal ones yeah. like they have the ability to just kind of like loop it around. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. But then there were some that had been there like it looked like for ages untold they'd been there they were like rusted <laughs> solid <laughs> like never some sort of lord of the rings uh, yeah. landlord uh-huh. set you know like you And know. then one uh, set of keys actually as we found them the per- like there had been someone that had been looking for them for hours and it was dark and I noticed them. And so Mike came over to take a picture and I shined my flashlight. And as I was shining my flashlight, this man was like, 
Oh my God, that, <laughs> I've been looking for those. He was like, are, are those Mr. Giuseppe's keys? Oh wow. And like, it turned out that this guy lived in this building, is our friend Chris, Chris Sapino. Okay. He, uh, he was it was coming out of his building and this gentleman lived with the super okay and he would been looking for the super's keys all day <laughs> yeah. and we just happened to find them while we were as we were meeting chris outside his house oh my god it's very yeah. strange chris's chris's episode was one of my favorites like oh, or, yeah. that was a great one or here yeah and then also like alexa afterwards talking about chris yeah, yeah. Totally. Or, like before like <laughs> totally. whatever that order about him being like the smelly kid that, yeah, like, was yeah. Weird. yeah. And, like, i really appreciate those episodes. well you are i think I, at least the third set. Maybe we can figure if it's the fourth or not. But you are. We've had three couples on at least. Bahij and Layla, mm -hmm. you, Alexa, and, and Chris, Chris, and then Tahir and me. Yeah. Yeah. And you, yeah. of course, are the bookend. Tahir was the first week's walk, and you are the final one. That's me bringing yeah. up the bag. Yeah, yeah. I got and some Sophie symmetry. And Chris. Four. It's four couples. Four there couples. you go. Oh, oh they, Sophie and Chris. Sophie yes. and Chris separately came on before we started walking. Okay. Yeah. So Sophie did a Zoom one, actually. Right. And then Chris did one in their backyard. But it was like before we got into the walks. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And my apologies Sorry if I'm, I'm forgetting. Yeah. 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 No disrespect. No. no. But, but yeah, we're so happy to have, you know, you and Tahir bookending us here. And like, it makes sense. I mean, for those, for anyone like listening that knows us, I think it would make sense. But for anyone not listening, the reason it makes so much sense is that you and Tahir are both also like, such amazing support systems and pillars in our lives. And I'm not gonna go too far into it because I don't want to make everyone cry, but it is like, you're both really special <laughs> people very sweet. to us. It's so very it sweet. makes sense to, for us to be like, starting this project and ending this project with That's so cute. Um, yeah. yeah, so Tahir and Michael were roommates when we first met and um, eventually, I think you guys were moving in together and then Tahir, I used to spend some time over at the house and that was the first time. And then I met Jesse and Jesse, I just fell in love with immediately. I said, this is the sweetest person <laughs> that's ever existed in the entire world. And she said, she said, well, not, not for everybody. <laughs> Not for everybody. Like, you have to be really, she's like, you're really sweet to me, so I'm really sweet to you, but don't yeah. be fooled. So I can be, you know, just it's true. It, no, it's true. I'm like a mirror. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, well, as, as a lot you, of people should be. You were sweet to me, and I was sweet Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. But <laughs> when you guys moved in together, Tahir, Tahir moved elsewhere for a while. and then He the, actually the, lived he with moved. us for one day. In your place together. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He's our only he roommate was, in the new place. Wow. When Literally we were, one day. When we were ready to move out, um, I didn't ever officially live with them. I still had my own my own apartment, but I was like spending a lot of time, of course. And when we were gonna move out, I think Tahir was like, "Oh no, like what am I gonna do? I'm gonna, like I love living with you guys." Yeah. And then he was gonna live with us for a month, so we moved all of his stuff in our apartment. And then the next day, he found a new like yeah a place to move into. So we moved it all out. Yeah. And helped him move into his new up place. A, but it was up nice. A five it was floor, like, you guys no. helped him go into that? Yeah, we did. I didn't even help yeah, with that. that was, we did. <laughs> I helped him like out of it. There was one cabinet that was like so heavy, but it was fine. It was great. And it was kind of nice to like That's... have him in our home for that one day to like yeah. get us settled. And then... Yeah. It's a little, it's like bringing, bringing the old over to get you into your place. Well, it's good that you guys didn't have him for the entire month, that you were able to like right. kind of yeah. get into the swing of having your own place without him. Yeah. yeah. But you also, did, he helped you hopefully like he moving did, in. And, I'm sure. And he yeah. came over, he wallpapered an entire, our like entire hallway one weekend. Amazing. And like, yeah. It's been so yeah. long, I don't really even great. remember that. I Thank remember you. That I remember. I remember. Vividly, because it was a really fun weekend. Was I there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the three of us wallpapered. Yeah. yeah. But he, he started, your, you guys had your first interview walking with him, and you guys were doing the Graveyards mm -hmm. episode. And I'm, I remember that was fascinating to me because I, I actually like am obsessed with gravestones and like I've been on like an ancestry journey and like go I actually at the time was like riding my bike and going to Cavalry Cemetery and like taking right. photos of like oh. yeah I was like really into it at the time so when you did that whole journey with through the graveyards I was here for it and then yeah. later yeah. revisiting with Greenwood yeah. was really cool yeah graveyards is one of the uh, I guess I've always kind of liked graveyards but it was definitely a new understanding to how enjoyable they are to be in, how yeah. much history they have, and uh, yeah, just kind of an awakening to them as a space within New York City. They yeah. have such a prominent role, especially where we live, 
on the more or less on the Queens Brooklyn border here. Mm -hmm. There's just such a, a thick band of them. So that's that was something I didn't know either. Yeah. Until yeah. watching. Yeah. 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 Which I think we covered in that episode. Uh, how that the reason that yeah. they were, uh, it actually kind of came up during the last pandemic that that they could. Uh, congregations could effectively double the size of their graveyards by putting them on the border because yeah. there was a certain yeah, there size were, like, that they could be. Yeah, there were rules for how many acres or whatever you could buy in Brooklyn and how many acres you could buy in Queens, and they could like then do both and have them right next to each other and expand it into like one big space. Do you yeah. guys feel like you've just leveled up with like your knowledge after this journey? Like, oh you, my gosh! You, yeah. I remember like the first episodes where you kind of would pick like your points and you you know you would read them off and you'd be like, "This is a fact that I learned about this," and you would kind of question it maybe, and then you guys would go back and forth and then. They talk, and now you guys go through it. You're just like teaching so much, and it's like you've learned so much through the process. Yeah. Yeah, it is really crazy. Um, I mean, I don't, I still don't feel like I even have like scratched the surface. But like before starting this, I didn't even know there was a surface to scratch. If that makes sense, like um, there's just so much to know and learn about this city. And it's, it's cool. I feel like I've got a really cool chunk of like a year's worth of knowledge now and like the the bug for like picking up on like interesting facts and like adding them. Like once once you have like that base, then it like slots in yeah. like a Tetris or something. Like this connects to this and this connects to that. So it help makes it easier to remember the like cool interesting facts about the city yeah it's crazy i mean uh a lot of people uh, at the wedding and even before that have been asking us what what's next and we can kind of get into that a little bit at some point but uh i one thing that i do think that i want to do is kind of we have a map uh, at home it's a print and it, it it's the city the five boroughs and then like every neighborhood is written down in the shape of the neighborhood you mm -hmm. know uh, and I would like to kind of compare that to the Google map and I almost like just basically do flashcards like, okay, Crown Heights is, you know, on the front of the flashcard and then like three facts on the back of it. It's like, oh, the first integrated school is in Crown Heights and like, oh, Weeksville is in Crown Heights. And like basically just like anytime I meet anybody, I can uh, like recall information that I gained from this walk and like reproduce it for them. So like not necessarily things that I haven't learned yet, although that would be nice, but basically like the experiences I've had in the past year in a way that's like accessible that I can share with people. I mean, it almost sounds like something that like an elementary school could like have for their kids. Like, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Crown Heights, name three facts. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Or just like something you could like carry around with you like bring to a party or something and like have there for people to like learn party game or something too. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or just like even like a thing like a reference book um yeah i think it's fun to have that little knowledge yeah so I, yeah, yeah. Go on. I feel like I feel like you've take you've gone on a journey that's basically expanded your knowledge of like an area and, and you said like you, you didn't even know there was a surface to scratch like it's it's crazy that you guys explored things and went into things that I never would have even put together that you know just facts on the history and then bringing in the experts that like talk about it even more and like going on the journey and physically seeing it is completely different from like just reading about it in like a book or, or an article you I definitely think you've leveled up and you've, you've taken scratching at the service and like deep dove into so many different things. And yeah. that's so commendable and crazy, but then also bringing it to other people and sharing it is, is very awesome. And it's something that no one really had done before quite as in depth, I feel like, as you guys have. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, feel, it feels good. And I think like kind of on that thread, um, there's all these people that we talk to that aren't like famous people that get taught like I think a lot of times when people do a podcast mm -hmm. or any sort of like interview show it's focused on like I want to interview someone that people already know and get like dig into like who they are and get to know them and we ended up and I think we even thought like on our list there were a couple people that we wanted to try and reach out to that were like already well known mm -hmm. um, but I actually ended up really loving like all the different characters, like meeting people that 
know so much about one thing or like are you know the president of this one organization but like not so well known that anyone outside that neighborhood would know them mm -hmm. but like have this wealth of knowledge it like made me appreciate so much there's eight million people in this city and like every single one of us has a really cool story to tell and mm -hmm. has like a really special connection to this city and so just like talking with a variety of people has been really nice totally does that make sense yeah like I as agree. opposed to like only people that might get like clicks or something you're like we want to know about it. it's like now i'm like oh man like i want to know about like everyone i just want to know everyone's stories Absolutely. not just like the famous people yeah i agree i mean i've i've been uh very pleased with the guests that we've got on uh there was I think there was an ambition at the start of the project to have a guest every week, and ultimately we didn't do that. And ultimately I'm glad we didn't, because it allowed us some time to talk out just what we were thinking too. Mm -hmm. um, but I really did love every time we, we had a guest on because it, it broadened our horizons, either you know, guests such as yourself that we already knew and learned more about them, or guests that we didn't know anything about and they were kind enough to join us and like then just, you have to do tons of research and learn all about them just to be able to carry but, a conversation with them that was and that was why it was not really plausible for us to have a guest every week because the overhead to like properly do that mm -hmm. didn't really uh equate to just how much bandwidth we had right you know, it was just you know i mean some especially some of the topics that we were you know really ambitious for us in terms of like culturally significant like uh uh, like the Native American roads one, or like um, when we did um, in pursuit of freedom. In pursuit right? of freedom, yeah. yeah. Where which was uh, you know like uh, the abolitionism movement in Brooklyn, things like that that are like really uh, important topics that we don't want to get wrong, and like we have to, we're trying our hardest to get uh, as much information as accurate as possible, and then whatever delta there might be, we ask for people to just be gentle with us if we do get it wrong, you know? Mm. But that's still very much putting ourselves out there and, and making sure that, um, yeah, we're very considerate or trying to be as considerate as possible. And that when you're walking 131 miles a week, you yeah. know, that can be uh, quite a balance to strike, you know? I mean, you're spending a month in Staten Island and then also trying to interview someone for like every single yeah. episode. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna explore any bit of the Staten Island. Yeah. yeah, I think that's where thing. I think that's where we started departing from having a guest every week. I think it might be actually, yeah. Well, because we had the first, I think the first week we were there, we interviewed the man that was running the space that we were staying Michael at. Johnson, yeah. Yeah, one of the, the founder, co-founders of, one of the founders. <laughs> yeah. Of that, of Ganas. Um, and then, yeah, I don't think for the rest of Staten Island that we had a guest because it was just like, oh, we want to do this right if we're going to do it. Although there was also, I think, one week in July when we were supposed to interview our friend Brian Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and then there was a tropical storm the day that it happened. So it was just physically not yeah. possible to do. Because it was the height of COVID, you couldn't go inside. Yeah. So, and then there was a tropical storm, so you couldn't go outside. I mean, we walked. But we couldn't yeah, sit speaking outside. of awful weather and like you guys walking, <laughs> yeah, I remember one episode where Jesse was talking. It was like during the terrible blizzard, yeah, and Jesse was like, "Yeah, when that when that wind picked up at that time, I think that was the third time that I cried that day, <laughs> <laughs> and my heart broke." <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, this poor thing," and you were like, "But then Mike took me, and we got like some goggles, and that really changed things for me for the better." <laughs> I was just like. God bless them. God bless them for getting up and getting out the door yeah. and doing this damn thing. And that's yeah. that's commitment. Yeah. And you say it a lot. Like sometimes I, I, I wake up and I don't want to do it, but you still do it. You guys showed up. Yeah. You, I mean, torrential downpours, the worst weather. What do you? What was the worst experience you think you had? Yeah, I know I mean, mine. It might have been the blizzard. Honestly, <laughs> that. I mean, that's definitely. That's the only day I think that I like, I think I cried like five or six times. Were you crossing bridges or something? Like even, like it was even worse or what were you it, doing? During the blizzard? No, no. it was no, just constant we were going snow. To, you know? Yeah, we went, that was the week where we were doing the racetracks, I think. Yeah, it was. And so we went out to Belmont 
that day, like the day of the blizzard. And it was really, really the thing that was so hard about that day was just like the amount of like bad weather advisories that pop up on your phone mm-hmm. that are like, don't go, stay inside, don't get on the road, don't yeah. go on the road, don't go out. And I like, I know that that's talking about like, don't drive. Mm-hmm. But I'm reading that and I'm like, should we not be out? Like, are we doing something dangerous? It's just like alerts to your core being saying like what you're doing is not right. Yeah. Like you should not be doing this. Right. And so I was like trying to figure out if we were like, okay to be doing what we were doing. And really it was like the first half until we got to the halfway point. Cause I think I was like dealing with this kind of sucks. Like this isn't really mm-hmm. enjoyable. I'm like, I wasn't cold at all. I was just getting hit in the face with ice yeah. and like couldn't really see. And like my feet were actually dry cause we had good boots, but like it was hard to move and I was getting tired. And it was like, you know, are, this isn't fun. And are we going to get hurt? And are we going to get like in trouble for being like out? Like a bus could spin and, out and like hit some ice and take you, like you never yeah, know. Yeah, like what's yeah. going to happen? Yeah. And then also like we're not even halfway through the day, you know? Yeah. It was like God. mile three and I'm like, oh, we have so far to go. Uh, I'm but remembering then, <laughs> like you said like, you, like at least my feet were dry, but like you guys had like your first torrential downpour and like you had like the ponchos of the clothes that just were not doing it for you. And you were yeah. so excited about these ponchos that were supposed to keep you driving, they did they not keep you dry. No, not <laughs> it didn't work. Not, at all. not for, I think they worked really well for like normal rain days, but for like the multiple tropical storms that we walked yeah. through in the oh fall. God. Yeah, it didn't work. That that one of those days though, sorry, and I'll let you. No, it's fine. Um, One of those days was bad also, but I still think the blizzard for me was the hardest day. But because like in the tropical storm, at least everything was just wet and then you're just wet. And then it like at some point becomes funny. Mm -hmm. Like we had sandwiches that we had packed and like we were trying to eat them and like they were just wet. Like it was just, everything was (laughs) wet. And I was just like still eating this peanut butter and jelly sandwich even though it was getting like poured. (laughs) It was also summertime, so it was not cold wet. Good. Some of yeah. the day, some of the days in the fall when it was uh, less rain but still soaked through, were really like, like nervous system like screwed up. Like I get home and like not be able to use my hands or anything. Mm. It was weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and then the, that would those would be the days too where I'd start to be like, are we gonna get sick? And are we? And there's a pandemic and should we be doing? It's raining and. I need to have soup when we get home, Mike, and we gotta <laughs> take a hot shower right away and like get eight hours of sleep to counteract whatever we're doing. Like, what are we doing? And then we were what fine. Are you, you, doing? you were fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the blizzard was, I mean, a lot of the, of the walking paths weren't tended at all. So it's, if you can just imagine, it's basically like, you're not in the city. You might as well be in an open field in a national park and there's 16 <laughs> inches of snow that you're walking across. Like it's that level of trudging, mm-hmm. but for a marathon. Like it was, yeah. so in that, I mean, it was, I thought it was, it was so ridiculous. It was sublime, like that type of thing. You know? I mean, it's a feat. So you, yeah. li- it's, you literally climbed like a mountain basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ended up losing Without two snow toenails, shoes. I think. Oh God. Yeah, for like yeah. the next, like, it felt like kind of weird in the boots and whatever. And then, like, over the course of the next two weeks, like, the two particular toenails, like, turned black underneath, and then they just kind of fell on. off. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, oh my God. they're still regrowing. It takes a while. And then, I, I mean, just the discomfort of that and then continuing walking. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really, all the discomfort things, actually, has been a really cool experience um, of just, like, pushing through. Yeah. And then at some point, like, not even really noticing. Like I, like even for our wedding the other day, I bought brand new white hokas to wear. Mm. And I think I like mentioned to someone like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy, wear these like brand new white hokas. And they were like, oh, you better break those in. And I was like, no. I mean, I probably will. I've dealt with worse. Yeah, Yeah. I was like, yeah, I probably will. A blister? Whatever. Blister's no big deal. And then I thought I would wear them a little bit and I didn't end up wearing them. I just immediately walked 33 miles and got married and like, yeah. it was fine. It was totally fine. And it's like that kind of thing you just don't really even notice anymore. I'm remembering you, there was like the, whatever that really high, high, high bridge that I'd never even heard of until your episode where that's like a, it was like a, 
a pier or a dock that people used to walk on, and then there's oh. a very high, like, intense stairs that were going down. High bridge. High bridge. bridge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've actually never been, but I want to go. Yeah, that's great. It's beautiful to learn about. But I remember in the episode, you were talking about how you had to kind of stop because your legs were cramping up so badly and you couldn't even get down to the rest, like the rest of the stairs. Yeah. Just like, and pushing through that, I was just like, God, they must be going through so much. Like, keep going. Way to go. Yeah. Well, Power that one you. in particular was like, I think I was noticing the leg feelings too because I'm like very afraid of heights and I was getting like vertigo too. And yeah. so it was like, all, I was like, ah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. To get to this, I guess that is the thing that, like, even though I don't quite feel like we're done fully, I do feel like, wow, we've really gone through a lot this year and, like, feel like I can push through and it makes me feel very strong. Yeah. Yeah, I'll answer my worst day just in case there are people that have been waiting. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, I, I might be recency bias, but it only happened, like, a, a few weeks ago. Uh, a friend of mine, Adam, I don't know if, hi Adam, if you happen to be listening to this, oh, um, right. intrad, er, er, uh, offered tickets to the Knicks game, the Knicks playoff game a few weeks back. So like, you know, everything's reopening, it's like 75% capacity or whatnot, and then like, I, I don't know, I haven't been to a Knicks game in a long time, in a playoff game no less. So I was like, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll go along with you. And, uh, and he was generous enough to like, uh, uh, like, I was like, I don't know if I want to pay that much, but I'll pay, you know, like 75% of it. And then I'll get the drinks at the game or whatever. So, great. So the drinks at Madison Square Garden are like, you know, they make it, they're like $16, but then they give you the 24-ounce can, you know. So I get the first round of drinks, and then I'm going to go to get some food I haven't eaten. And I was like, do you want another drink? And he was like, yeah. And it's like, so I'll have another drink. Okay. And then the game's over. They win. It was the one game they won. And uh, I figure I'm going to go home, but he's like, hey, you want to go hang out like at a bar? And of course, I haven't seen him in so long. You know, let's go hang out. So then we had like one drink, two drinks, three drinks. And then by the end of it, it's like, oh, wow, I'm drunk. Like, this is a thing. And we are, I know, like, I feel like during COVID, people either like leaned into drinking or leaned out of drinking. And we were people that leaned out. So like, my, that was probably like the, those five were probably like, six through ten of all the drinks you've had all year or something like, more or less yeah and i mean those 24 ounces those are two drinks each you know so i had like yeah. seven drinks which is not a lot in the grand scheme of things but when you haven't drank at all mm -hmm. you know the next day i woke up and i was like i have made a terrible mistake to die. Um, and then we walked in marathon yeah oh, and then gosh. like I, it was like i don't know if i can do this and then ultimately it was like the calculus of like taking that day off and like moving it to the end of the week was just like not palatable so I just got to get up and do it. And uh, I think yeah. also like I was like, I like went out and got you stuff, like whatever. I got you like Advil and Gatorade and a banana or something. But I was yeah. like, I was perky. Like I hadn't got, I hadn't done that. <laughs> you so didn't I was have like, all those drinks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it, it, so yeah, the first two hours I was like, please just don't talk to me. You didn't do anything wrong. I did everything <laughs> wrong, but yeah. like, I just cannot communicate. And then it, it gradually got better. But I mean, it does, I think it also speaks to just the idea of like, there was really a very small margin of us being able to screw up. Yeah. You know, we just, it had to be very constructed. You couldn't just have like, oh, I'll just one night I'll just do something else. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And then we'll yeah. pick it up tomorrow. It's like, no, pretty much every day, this was the primary thing to make sure that we maintained this, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, a good thing we did walk that day too, because then we saw Bill de Blasio in Greenwood. Yeah, we ended like, up. I ended, ended up, up using the bathroom. Using the, the same, same bathroom as him in oh, Greenwood wow. Cemetery. <laughs> wow. Which is, did we tell that story? I it? don't know if we did or not. If we if we didn't, there's more. Uh, the, 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 uh, I'll give whatever. you the, the Cliff Notes version. He was still on his Sounds conference good. call when he was using the urinal. Wow. So that's uh, that's Bill for you. But uh, and you said urinal, not like stalls. So yeah, 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 yeah. I guess it's a little better if we're gonna <laughs> yeah. go for it. But yeah, I mean that. So that was the the most again recency bias, perhaps. That was the most challenging day, and then maybe the days in the first couple of weeks when uh, it was the enormity of the task was like really like yeah. out there. It's like, you know, 52 hot dogs on a table and it's like, you got to eat all of these, you know? Yeah. Uh, and just being like, I said that I was going to do this thing. We said we were going to do this thing and we both are very sincere about keeping our word when it comes to things. So like, all right, well, there's nothing to do but just move forward, okay. you know? But there's a lot of anxiety when you're, you know, like, because also time, changed so dramatically over the course of this project mm -hmm. like uh 
you know, week two or three, Wednesday of the week felt like an eternity until the end of the week. Yeah. And now, I mean, the day's just like Monday. It's like, wow, it's already Friday. Wow. Okay. All right. Next week. Here we go. You know? So it, it just like the time dilation and like the, the getting your head into the project. I mean, we had faith that it would happen, but you never know until like you actually like start experiencing it, how it's going to go. So you conditioned yourselves. Yeah. So now how, how do you feel about sleeping in a little more and not having to go to bed by like seven or eight or whatever you were doing and waking up at? Yeah. Well, at the beginning, we were being really good about that and we were like, we're going to get, and it, we started in the summer, so it was hot. So mm. we were like, we are going to get up at five. We're going to start walking really early, get a bunch in before it gets like the middle of the day. That was really important. So we were really good about going to bed at like eight, nine, ten, and getting up at five. And then at some point, I don't remember what the point was, somewhere in the fall, I think, we just like didn't do that anymore. Mm. And we would just like stay up and then get up at like 10 wow. and just like start walking then and sometimes not even start till like noon and it was just like then you would just be out until 10 p.m. and then that would push it further. So like I feel like every Monday we would try to get up earlier okay. than we had the previous Friday. Because it moves back by the end of the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just yeah. get things done in the evening. It's really... I, I'm, I think we may have talked about this at some point on the podcast. If we have, then you're hearing it again. But uh, the idea, like one, the idea that somehow uh, like getting up later is a sign of somebody that's not like seizing the day, which is insane because we're walking a marathon. Like it's, there's still like that's still happening. Um, but also I think just our natural tendency is to uh, be up later. So it just started going that way as our body didn't need that like immediate rest anymore, you know? Mm. And as our routines gradually change to, to the point where uh, particularly anytime we traveled, uh, you know, abroad, we went to like an out, our outer borough, like when we went to Staten Island or when we went to the Bronx, Bronx. Uh, the routines would shift because we were no longer at home. And then we would come back from those areas and it would be uh, uh, kind of an interesting thing to see like what was retained and then what ended up falling away. Mm. So like the big yeah. things that come to mind are in, in Staten Island in September, we had like a big food regiment prior to that. And then when we were in Staten Island, the food was part of staying there. Like, you know, that we, so when we came back, it gradually, uh, food prep became less and less a yeah. thing because it, I don't, I mean, I don't really know why it just did, you know, yeah. we, it wasn't a habit anymore after a month and then picking up a habit while you're still recording a podcast every week and walking 131 miles. It's just, it's difficult without a team of people basically. Yeah. And then, so I don't even really yeah. know how to like cook anymore. I'm going <laughs> to like relearn that. Well, but I mean, you know, but, but truly, like, I think the habit was we would come home and, like, before I would, like, sit down, I would, like, go to the kitchen and, like, get stuff going, you know, like, wash the vegetables or put the rice on or whatever it was. And then I would sit down and, like, drink a glass of water or do whatever. But then after being in a place where, like, for a month I didn't have to do that, then, like, when we came back in October, I was just... As it just became less dinner, frequent. I was sitting down, and then I was like, oh, wait, we don't have dinner. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, let's just order something or whatever. Like, I don't, now I'm sitting and I, like, don't want to go find the onions or whatever. Well, you guys had a food journey because every single time you were in a different area, like, there was the Russian deli and you were going to have that, or, like, it was yeah. going to be all Italian or, like, like, going through Queens, like, the Asian food and every, yeah. you know. And also, what, Jesse's work changed yeah, fundamentally as it progressed like the first few months was still like pandemic supply mm -hmm. you know and then at a certain point it switched to like oh, we're pretty much at full production again and so that yeah. changed like That's the true. times that, that jesse like... was available to like come back because of course she was walking three marathons and i was walking five so one of those days there's an opportunity to make something but, but then at some point it was like, nope, none of those days. Like, I need all four of those days, like... Catch up on work and life. And yeah, exactly. And <laughs> yeah. Like work 12-hour days on, and then walk 12-hour days. Yeah. And yeah, I think someone asked, like, I think since October, I don't think I've taken a day off. 
Bless you. Until this week. But like, but it's interesting because like, what is taking a day off, you know? Like the days when we were walking were great. And like, we got to spend a lot of time together and like, I got to at least rest my mind a little bit. Yeah. And then I go to work and I'm like doing something completely different. And I also really love what I do for work. And so, yeah, yeah I don't know. It, it, that'll be a weird, interesting thing to like reintroduce is like days off where we're just, I don't even know what that looks like. What do you do on a day off? Yeah, I mean, you go to, you go to the park and you walk around and you like You just don't record it. this. You yeah. just talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 It'd be interesting for you guys to segue, but it, yeah, you guys probably have some things coming up on the horizon though, and a lot of people have been asking about it. Are you ready yeah. to talk about it? I, I mean, that'll be all uh, in terms of Vermont. That's we're going to Vermont starting July fifth. This is the honeymoon, right? This is the honeymoon. Yeah. The Three official. weeks, yeah, that we're going up there, and that'll be the space to decide what's next. At, the the kind of the the idea is have a total decompression and then start getting antsy like in a positive way where it's like I don't know what to do with myself and then that's when like you can have enthusiasm come back in I feel like if we were to decide right now it would be based on furthering this thing exclusively and I don't know necessarily if that would align with enthusiasm there's a good chance that it could but it may more be about like, well, how can we make this something more than what it is? And I don't think that's always the best place to be making things from. Yeah. Much rather just kind of appreciate this thing that we did because we've already done so much in addition to walking 7,000 miles around New York City. Like we've made, this will be the 56 podcast episode, you know? And we also took all of these photos. We did all of this video. Um, and we have grown as people outside of whatever external presentation we're giving to people. We need to reflect on that too. So like mm -hmm. if we didn't do a single other thing about the project, it would be completely successful, you know? Mm -hmm. So give ourselves yeah. some time to think about it and then create from a space of enthusiasm, you know? Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when we planned this out, I mean, I still have it at my studio. We have this like 30 foot roll like six foot tall 30 foot roll of paper that we had taped on the wall and we wrote out like all these questions about what we were doing and categorized everything and specifically as we were going we like left some like end goals like we stopped them at a certain point like this is what we can complete in a year and like not thinking about what's next or like how do you wrap it up or how do you present it in a way that's like you know palatable to other people or like something that makes money or you know not like taking ourselves out of that framework a little bit mm -hmm. so that now yeah we have the space if something in that framework feels exciting we can still do it but like to not just like you know if we want to like make a book or something for example it'll have to be like, if we want to make a book, not just cause like people are saying, oh, you should make a book, you could probably sell it or whatever, you know, cause that's like not, we already do so many things because we can like sell it or make money or further ourselves or, you know, whatever. And this year has been so special that like, there was an element of like, you know, we're putting this on YouTube. We want people to see it. And oh, if we get to this many subscribers, we can potentially put ads on it or, and, but like, I really love that. It's also like, we're going to keep doing it no matter what. And we're not like buying ads and we're not like pushing it too hard in any sort of way that like feels not like us. Cause it makes it just like truly what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, very excited to think about it. I yeah. mean, I, I, this is not to say that we won't do anything. I'm, no. I'm pretty confident we will be doing things around this project. Just enjoy what you've completed right. and relish in that. And there's no need to rush into something. You guys have had enough time to walk and process and think and plan. But for now, like, this is, this is your ending of this particular project. Yeah. And 
appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and for be proud of yourselves. Yeah. Be very proud of yourselves. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And for I mean, it's it's so interesting that with the pandemic being the backdrop for all of this, there and in this part of the country or this country, right? Um, I think a lot of people can be feeling those same things, you know? Yeah. Almost every person has a story about this past 15 months that could be a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. Like if you were to just struck, write it down, you know? And so I think everybody can take that opportunity to kind of reflect on what just happened. Well, we all went through some shit, but you guys like, you guys went the opposite route of everyone just staying in and like <laughs> shutting down and drinking too much. You guys kind of went the opposite route and like we're out there in it. And yeah. It's completely the opposite. So don't don't put yourself in the same box of everybody else. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, sure. I'm, I mean, but, but also we all have our own like independent experiences. And I mm -hmm. do think, yeah, I mean, there was an element. We really weren't, no, like we weren't staying in we were out um but we were still isolated mm -hmm. in this it was weird because it's like we were out in the world but we weren't out in the same way that like we would have been in february of 2020 we yeah. weren't going to bars we weren't going to restaurants we weren't going on the subway like we weren't doing we weren't seeing anyone like we were just seeing each other we just happened to be like leaving our apartment plus it was a very scary time and to be walking around a lot of people and getting into areas with masks and like yeah. being just being on a sidewalk next to them was terrifying it was. yeah and I'm, yeah. yeah i'm really glad we did that too though i think like my in, it's in my nature to kind of like shrink up and like hide from things that are scary and i think doing this like and not drinking also like like being like fully 100 percent sober and in it present and going like head first into the like terrifying world that we didn't know anything about like something about doing that especially at the at the very beginning like even though it was really scary and i was constantly thinking like should we be doing this mm -hmm. is this right are we gonna you know what's gonna happen um it feels really good like it felt like i practiced that all year and like i don't know what scary things are gonna come up next but i'm like super ready to like be the person that continues to like walk towards it yeah you know don't don't run away from it don't shy away from it because yeah. you can you can conquer it yeah, yeah. you've done it yeah. yeah yeah and now that we can see our friends again it's lovely i feel like i can like <laughs> grab elbows with people and be like come on it's okay like it's okay come on let's do it <laughs> yeah. yeah speaking of that i want to transition to talking about the wedding if if you'd be so inclined the wedding was so beautiful and nicely done and I think so original and like completely different from any other wedding experience I've ever seen. Thank you. Yeah. What nice. was the what was the biggest highlight for you of the day? Oh my gosh. Mm. Do you have a I don't know. I mean there's probably a lot of highlights. I guess just in general, you know, when people are talking about like oh or I, I guess I had a number of people say to me like, oh, it's going to be like a rush. Just try to be present. Just try to enjoy it. And I was like, OK. Um, and then the moments when it was like kind of more like a traditional wedding, even though even those moments weren't like when we were at the lunch and there were just a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then even at the after party and there were just like a lot of people and everyone you know, I felt like I only had five seconds with everyone and was getting like pulled away to take photos and doing this. And like, that was like, whoa, this is moving really fast. And I like, don't feel like I get to talk to everyone. But I think the in between time of walking was really just like, I was obviously we like, that was the, what the whole day was planned around. But I was just so grateful that we did that because it actually gave me a moment to like, do that whirlwind of like oh my gosh these are all these people and then like decompress but it wasn't over like yeah. i was gonna get another chance at like seeing the people that i had missed earlier and you know trying to like maybe introduce the people i wanted to introduce like i feel like sometimes especially in like a social situation like i get really overwhelmed and then i'm like 
oh man, I should have done this thing or I should have done that thing. And then it was like, I got another chance at it later in the day. <laughs> um, and it was like, yeah, we got to see a bunch of people and kind of have that like rush and then like slow down with like less people mm -hmm. and then slow down with just the two of us and then just like enjoy. And I made it so that like the ceremony was so fun. Like I thought, I don't know, I thought I'd be a little nervous or something standing up in front of people and like reading what I had written that felt really like honest and kind of like I wrote, I like wasn't sure if I was like being too emotional and vulnerable and then realized. It was funny. Okay, good. It was really funny. <laughs> it was cute. She, she referenced the astrology book, if, if you caught it, basically yeah. like going home and reading about his horoscope as soon as she met him and and processing how like <laughs> it wasn't supposed to it wasn't supposed to work out the stars didn't tell us it was but then here you are well i think it, yeah it's interesting because <laughs> when i think about that i've heard the story before you yeah know? it it doesn't i think there's like you know the idea of crisis opportunity you know where it's like i think it just all all it indicates to me is that there's like a powerful force that is existing on this day and then it's what we do with it that ultimately like decides whether it's good or not, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's how I've always interpreted it as. Yeah. Do they, does everybody know that you guys started the day on your own private walk before going on to that? Because I know the video that you released kind of right. starts at the lunch, but there was a whole other walk portion that happened prior. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, now you know. We, yeah. uh, <laughs> we started the day at 5 a.m. We got up at 4, we left at 5. Uh, we had this incredible experience at sunrise, which I believe we told you, but I'll, I'll describe it again and I, we can link to a video where we got to Marine Park right as the sun was cresting over some trees and, you know, we film everything. So I started filming it and, uh, you know, 10 seconds into the filming, there was a person that was just down by the water that had brought their recorder. And all of a sudden they're playing this Celine Dion-esque, my heart will go on kind of like, <laughs> Irish, Asian, I'm not sure what it, but like, you know, folk tune Penny on the recorder. Flutes. And yeah. it was just a surreal experience for like a minute and 45 seconds. Just like, is this really happening? I don't know, yeah. keep recording. I don't I know. I like thought maybe I was just hearing things. I was like, am I just like really excited It's your about wedding day? day. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And so, yeah, it couldn't have been a more auspicious beginning. And that period of three hours that we were walking around along with the period of the hour before the ceremony were some really nice moments that I think were part of the non-traditional aspect of our wedding that I'm really grateful for, which is having time with each other yeah. rather than it being separate. And I can see yeah. the merits of it being separate because then it's like a big moment when you get together. Yeah. But for us, it was like a time to compare notes, a time to connect and a time to really just feel what the day was. So for everyone that didn't see in the wedding video, um, we did after the lunch all walk together in two groups. Jesse had a group, Michael had a group, and then we all came together at the park. And then we walked through the park all together as one big group. But then at the end, they said goodbye to everybody and they finished off their marathon walk together yeah. alone without everybody. It was so special. Um, and actually, well, I'm remembering another couple that we actually had on here together. It was JP and Patrick. Oh, and yes. Because oh that was one episode actually, at all. How many no. couples? Oh my well, they God. came on one episode <laughs> together. And the reason I bring that up is because actually right when we said goodbye to everyone that was with us in the park, Patrick showed up. Right. And he had brought along a pinhole camera that is like a camera that takes just one photo. Yeah. And he took this amazing photo of us. That's so great. During that time. So it was nice. We kind of got to like decompress from like the big group that we had and take this really special photo with like one friend. And then we said goodbye to him and had our time alone. Yeah. Amazing. That's on Instagram if people want to see it. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think walking, just like that moment walking around. I mean, we, on the way to the lunch, um, we had like this this baptist preacher ran out of his church and was like yelling happy father's day to us and then mike yelled oh it's our wedding and he came running across the street and oh. like blessed us talked to us oh, for like five minutes and like gave us these blessings and that's amazing it was amazing and then <laughs> so 
Yeah, we Brooklyn. had all these yeah. moments with people and like. He had a big diamond cross on. <laughs> oh, it was cool. Oh, it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah really and we cool. filmed that. So at some point that'll be out in the world. It'll be there. <laughs> yeah. And at some point in the second half of the day in the walks um, before we met up, my group went to use the bathroom at a park and there was a big sprinkler and like people were like running through the sprinkler in yeah. their like, you know, wedding outfits. Yeah. And I didn't because I was actually in a gown. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was in my wedding dress that I had made and went over to refill my water cup. And um, there was this little girl like filling up water balloons. So I like helped her fill a water balloon and then yeah. like asked if I could use the water fountain. And she's like, I like your dress. You're pretty. <laughs> I'm like, Thank you. So it was like these really cool extra moments that, yeah, I don't think, um, not that there's, you know, I think traditional weddings of course have their merits too and are really fun and great, but like, you don't get that kind of thing. Like you don't get to talk to like the little girl at the park filling up her water balloons. Right. And that, what was, what was fun for me during that walk is, is having the layovers that were already pre-planned and organized, knowing that everyone was going to get to go to the bathroom in the park. And I think you guys had spoken about this in other episode where in your journey you found out that like parks were actually like your little respite and then planning for the wedding that everyone was going to kind of have these layovers because we also layered over in a park but I don't think it was the same one no it was a different one yeah 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 Yeah, that worked out well for us and to Jesse's point about you know being able to interact with people in a way you wouldn't normally it was uh, another interesting uh joining of uh you know people come together and they basically I, I use the phrase uh earlier this week like a love bubble basically you know the idea is that everybody's going to give you unconditional positive regard everything's going to be great and uh and I'll, there's another point side to that that i'll get to in a little bit but basically the idea is like it's just this vehicle all day where everything's going to be positive and good and they're going to give you everything they got uh, and it's usually in the context of like these very private spaces and we took that bubble and tested it against an outside world and it was uniformly received positively i can't really think of an experience where there it was, was one moment where oh, okay here we go. <laughs> i was like it was awesome there was, yeah. one, <laughs> there was one moment in the first half of the walk on the way to the lunch where there was someone that we walked by him he was on his stoop and he he was like Oh. really freaked out by like the all the people walking and he started filming it and like mike at right as we were walking by him was like hey it's our wedding and i don't know if he didn't hear or like what he what was going on in his head but he was like i don't know what's happening this is disgusting i didn't hear this is disgusting he said, this is disgusting and i was like and then like someone near and like it was fine i'm like i hear people say weird stuff to me all the time i've been walking like i've walked thousands of miles around the city this year right it's fine but was I it the fact that you guys were walking at like six o'clock in the morning with a bunch of people to their neighborhood or no, what? I, don't know no. what it was. I, I mean I, I know what it was basically we were walking through bed okay. and it was like mostly white people a procession and of, i think oh, we were in nice clothes and yeah. i think he thought it was some sort of weird uh, invading gentrification party. Yeah. Oh, um, maybe that's what was going on. But like we, I, I mean, that's know. why I, mean, I said I like it's our wedding. We was trying to engage him, but yeah. he was more interested in filming us. Yeah. Without yeah. our consent, really. But we Which were on the street. You know, fine. it's fine. It's like a tour it's, group going through. Like, yeah, that's. Wait, oh, that, maybe like, he that would, did think it was a tour. Oh, that'd be that's a problem. A good point. Maybe he thought it was a tour group, and there just happened to be one lady in a wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I that mean, quirky one in the gauze. He clearly was like not wanting to have the love bubble infiltrate him and that's fine and i wasn't offended but but what happened then i was kind of like why does he think we're disgusting and then like three people around me were like we're moving on (laughs) i feel like most people were like there's this like extra buffer around even though like we're fine like there was still this like extra buffer all day of like exactly anything that could have been negative was like bounced back perfectly so yeah and that's that's the only thing that i can think of that happened um from like the outside world that was like a negative experience and it wasn't even it was fine it was great yeah (laughs) who cares about him he's probably cranky i think he was just cranky he was also like carrying a coffee like he it was he was cranky he was tired yeah i mean the flip so the flip side of that whole thing is i gen not that particular instance with that guy but the idea of like creating this 
uh, experience for us for the day is that typically I want to understand how other people are feeling and respond to their feelings. And so I think it worked well most of the day because anytime people were giving us positivity, it was reflecting it back immediately, like, and we we're just elevating the whole experience. But, you know, I don't think we will maybe ever get like an, a totally accurate depiction of what the day was, you know, because everybody's just gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, everything was wonderful. You know, nobody's gonna be like, well, there was that one thing, you know, it's like everything's just gonna be the best version of whatever it could be at any time, you know. And uh, as somebody that's uh, really cognizant of both trying to understand what's really happening and trying to be uh, uh, considerate of others, uh, I the next day and like uh, I, I was thinking like it almost feels like a f it's it's false it's not false it's just people coming together to make something but it, it's like it's synthetic but you have to trust the fact that it's synthetic like it's not possible to live like that forever it's only something that humans can come up together and make happen in a durational capacity and it, it isn't really important what actually happened what's important is that we felt that everything was perfect you know it yeah. was. <laughs> it was a celebration. Well, also, like, on top, it was nice for everyone to come together because it was also an opportunity to see people that we haven't seen in a very long time. And, and there's so much love and, like, missing of everyone and then coming together for the celebration of this thing that's so monumental in your lives. And, like, you right. know, we get to share it with you. And in such a yeah. fun way, it wasn't just the normal, like, meet at the space and have a dinner and, like, watch a dance and a, a cake situation. It was a full experience that was immersive and awesome. Walking through Prospect Park with like all the different oh, music sure. and like- On the solstice. I mean, that's part of why we did it that, you know, it's a summer solstice. It's there there was a full event yeah. happening all over the park and every corner you took, there was different music like kind of happening and just people out and celebrating. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It felt really special. Yeah. And yeah. And it felt really, yeah, it felt really special, especially like after this year of people not seeing each other yeah. to like have this event where we were like not only bringing people together for us to see them and to celebrate us but like I really ha felt happy that because I also don't I really hate to be like the only center of attention and I really like feel selfish to like have people just come to see me kind of thing so I did it felt nice that it was like well we're also hosting an event where like people who want to see each other and haven't like been able to are given like a reason to come see each other as well. Yeah. So that, it did feel really special to yeah. do that. I think it was cathartic for a lot of people to be able to gather and like embrace and uh, for now, you know, not feel the specter of sickness that we've felt for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it, was, it was literally the kickoff to summer. So this is gonna be <laughs> quite the summer for everybody. You know, you guys were the event of the summer already starting at the beginning. <laughs> that's right. So. That's right. Yeah. But I, uh, you know, something that struck me after in the it, something that struck me after that, I guess, in retrospect, after going to so many weddings and hearing people describe the, like the things like you said, like, take it all in, you know, or and like others, it goes so quick or, you know, stuff like that. I, I realized that, like. Uh, it is it's an intoxicating experience it's like a drug it's like yeah. the, the, the the wedding experience is a drug a love drug like I didn't I only had one drink but I felt like punch drunk the entire day mm. and then I woke up like it after like four hours of sleep and I felt like completely wiped out like every single endorphin in my body was gone wow. and like I felt a depression like which was whatever it's a consequence of having that experience and mm -hmm. I feel good now but I, I never really realized because I don't think that's I guess it's not like um, it's a little gauche maybe I don't know what the word is exactly but to describe your wedding is like yeah it's like a drug but like that really like I mean it's it is all this positive energy that's fed into you and you experience that day high you know it's, all, it's also the it wasn't just that like but you you were it's the culmination of everything you've been building up to right and i told this to ty here when you guys had that whole announcement party right where i thought you were going to announce that you were getting engaged because you had everybody all kind of tuned in and it was the announcement of this this journey you were going on and i told ty here later i said i bet you that this 
whole walk thing that they're doing at the very end is going to result in a wedding. Ah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you didn't get it right the and first I, I time, knew. but you got it right the second time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, they're getting engaged. And then when you announced it, I said, they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to result in like a proposal at least. Sure. But yeah. the wedding was the best way to end it. Yeah. It felt really, yeah, I'm really glad we did it that way. Because even when we, when we did officially get engaged, you know, we thought like, we should do this on the last day of the project or do so special. But then, you know, with, like taking on planning that and taking on the concern of like, is COVID going to be over? Like, are we going to be safe by then? Like, what's it going to look like? All these questions still. Yeah, it changed it dramatically so, in the three months anytime leading Anytime we would talk about like doing it later, we were like, well, I don't know. Then I don't really, what are we doing? The timing was perfect. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was, it, it was the first time, at least for me, and I think for Jesse too, but where like, it just clicked. It wasn't like we were necessarily uh, avoiding marriage. It was just like, what is the what is the through line where it makes sense, and like fills us with enthusiasm to do. And this was this was where it hit, you know. And it came with a lot of uh, anxiety, I think, on my end at least, and like the the structuring of the event up until it happening. Mm -hmm. Not nerves, but like the idea of just like, I want as much as possible to be as good as possible. Uh, but then the actual day of, like, there was no, there was nothing like that. You know, yeah. it just kind of all, it all came together, all the planning and whatnot. And thank God the weather was what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would have made it work if it rained, but it was yeah. nice to not have it be rain. It was nice and that it was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, and that was yeah. it. It's also interesting. I mean, you say you had a little anxiety about the planning and everything. I did, I guess, from time to time, but, like, mostly... It was wild to like plan a wedding and like we already planned this whole year. I've already been like planning, like managing a bunch of people on days I'm not like I feel like getting like the skills that we've gotten as like producers have really grown <laughs> over this last year. And so honestly, planning the wedding was like to me, I felt like not really that big of a deal like yeah. it was kind of just like all right well what do we want to do how do we make it happen what are the questions there right, let's do it like gotta order stuff let's order stuff gotta yeah. call people let's call people i don't know like you want me to make a graphic for the invitation i'm on it like <laughs> seating chart yeah, yeah seating chart did it yeah <laughs> i mean I, th I was definitely confident that we had the skills to get it done it's more the when we we're planning everything for us there's there's nobody that we have to like communicate, okay, here's what you do, you know? Yeah. And in a typical wedding, uh, if you're doing it in a way that there are, a lot, uh, there are a lot of traditions people can follow, there's less you have to actually communicate to people. But for this, we felt that we had to really over communicate. And that also, it's funny how like a lot of that over communication, the degree to which people actually ingested that information, where it's mm -hmm. like this tricky thing where like, I, I want to give you all the information you need to make this happen, but I already kind of know if I give you all the information, you're not going to be able to absorb it because it, like only a few people will actually read a five paragraph email. Your, you know? your schedule of the day when yeah. I first looked at it was like, why is this so complicated? Like right. what is going on? Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't grasp it. And then when you asked, when you guys had asked Tahir and I to get involved and and kind of help with the process. It made sense that you would need somebody to kind of do that because it is very confusing. But then when I went back and kind of read through it, it was like, oh, oh, okay, this isn't actually <laughs> that. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, totally. So that I'm, I'm, and combine that with again like the idea of uh, people wanting to know what to do traditionally at the wedding. They crave like, okay, I stand here, I watch the first dance, uh, I see the cake. Are they going to smash into each other's faces? I don't know, mm. but that's the only variable, right? right. Yeah. Is the smash cake face going to happen? Uh, but for this, it was like literally like just you can't expect anything. And so we had to provide all this information. And that's where the anxiety came for me was like, do people understand? Do they not understand? You know, yeah. and ultimately the thing that was one of the things that was a tradition uh, that remained in our wedding was just like, just show up and provide positive regard. That's really all we want. And I think as soon as people showed up, they realized that's all they had to do and boom it was easy you know yeah. i want to compliment the like the small touches that like the the lunch was that you guys had the cocktail menus there was the highly and the varlet 
and then the total, the total clarity. clarity. Total yeah. And then even the bagels, we know that you've had a very big bagel journey. Yeah. We've all experienced the bagel journey right. with you. It was one of the questions that you asked was, were, were those bagels from your favorite place that you found in the search? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the different spreads and choices that were in there, were those like curated a specific way? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. the, I assumed. Yeah, the, it was so a very specific menu. There's kind yeah. of a there's kind of a two parter to that one. One, it was the only five bagel I had, and the five bagel five star five yeah, star bagel five out of five. Yeah, it was a good and bagel. I consider that it, to be more a moment in time than an actual replicable bagel experience. And uh, two. Well, just because, like, you know, you probably had, you give it five stars because it's like you might have walked in right when it just came out of the oven or whatever. And so you're not going to, yeah. Well, I, I, and I had had that bagel prior a few days earlier, and it was like a 425. So, like, it's good. Like, it's still a good bagel. It's a solid bagel. Yeah, it's a big, yeah. good bagel. <laughs> uh, but uh, in addition to that, this bagel store also happened to be in Middle Village, which is where both my parents are from. And it is the very close to the graveyard where my dad is buried. So part of the reason it was a five was because like that energy was coming. I like sat down on like like a parking lot guardrail and was eating this and it was like a mess, but it was so good. And I was just like thinking about him as I was eating it. And so ultimately it happened to be one of the closer bagel spots to the bar, but also it seemed like a nice pairing for like involving the memory of my dad in some way too. It's lovely. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, and then uh, the black and white cookies that were there yeah. was down the street at the, uh, the you know, I, I hope I'm right, Mom. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, because I never really got definitive word on this, but it's not where she used to work in terms of the establishment, but I believe it is the same building where she used to work at a bakery when she was like 16. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so those were good black and white cookies. Yeah, they were they're too. Delicious. Like I nice. they I looked up best black and white cookies in the city and like Russ and Daughters is considered the best ones. Mm -hmm. And then I went and had it and it's very good and it definitely has like a unique take on the black and white cookie, but I didn't feel it was as good as this one. It was which is this black and white cookie was like a cakey one. There were cakes. And it was the so yeah, soft. and the Warm. icing was like uh, irregular as opposed to like a perfect circle like fondant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it worked well. Yeah, and then we had the gluten free food, which was from a bagel place that we found just during this year. That's uptown and is like a fully gluten free bakery and they also like do a bunch of stuff that's not bagels like all sorts of like breads and sweets and things like that too and we go there like anytime we're anywhere near the upper west side i'm like do you think we can go to modern bread and bagel modern yeah bread and bagel. Um, yeah yeah so we got we're able to get stuff from there and yeah it all kind of like tied in yeah and then our um friend matt clifford who has grilled cheese alley inside of the bar also was into making like a special little menu for us. Mm -hmm. The to avocado supplement. toast, avocado yeah, toast, avocado pickled toast and Brussels sprouts, and uh, mini, mini quiches. quiches. Yeah, I did not know that there were Brussels sprouts and quiches. <gasps> oh no, I'm it sure was they were the delicious. Menus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely heard avocado toast, but yeah. I mean, yeah. I was all about the bagels. bagels yeah, were yeah. totally. Yeah, what about... there was only so much you could take in, I guess. Yeah. Right. The bagels were very filling. I went yeah. for a two-parter. Nice. Um, cats. Cats yeah. Deli yeah. coming yeah, that for was the one dinner. Another special thing at the lunch that I should oh, mention. Okay. But my landlord at my studio yes. actually, Fernando, went as soon as I told him we were engaged. He, him, and his wife are like really into the food world here in New York. And as soon as I told him we were engaged, he was like, "Amazing! Congratulations! Can I make your cake?" <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't think we're going to have a cake, you know, like it's not really a traditional wedding. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to make your cake. Like, <laughs> you're getting a like, cake. In, you're getting a cake. So he just insisted and like made it happen. And I was like, okay, that's great. And so, yeah, they like came with and like sat, brought, brought it in the corner and like iced it there and put all these little berries. And it's it was amazing. so sweet and so good. And yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's very generous. Thank really you. Really nice. Yeah. yeah. And so then, yeah, at night we uh, got Katz's too, yeah. which is also like classic New York. Yeah, and this is another one of those things, nobody's ever gonna tell us the truth about this. I hope there was enough, yeah. because what happened, uh, what appeared to happen was that we gave everybody the RSVP option. It was an a la carte wedding. Are you gonna come to this part, <laughs> this part, this part? And so there was the after party, and it's like, are you gonna come to this part? And a lot of people said no, 
it's a school night, I'm going to go home. And then those people ended up showing up, which that's wonderful. Yeah, which is but great. we ended up, we, we should have just ordered enough food for whoever was at the ceremony. I mean, how are you we, supposed to know that people right. are just well, going to... we had like 90 people say they were going to come. Yeah. So we ordered like the right amount for like 90 to 120, like what Katz's suggests from like 90 to 120. More than enough yeah. food. So we thought, yeah, we were like, I think that'll be more than enough. But then at some point, like pretty early on, we were like, there's no food. Like, there was like this long line of people to get food, and then it was like gone. And I hope everyone got food. I think but everybody did. I mean, the but fact that the food completely disappeared, it sounds like good. all of it I think that's was a good thing, enjoyed. Yeah. There I wasn't tons left of, over. I know a number of people told me that they like made it back for seconds even. Good, so, that's good. Yeah. I grabbed I grabbed two, two portions, because nice. I grabbed two different sides, and I, nice. I knew like at least if I, had one tire could have the other totally. right. I ended up having a bite but then I, I was very tired after that yeah, yeah. that yeah. was also a, that was yeah, delicious somebody, it was I much forget needed. who told us yeah I think it was Chris Hart uh and Michael Hayden maybe I think they were like yeah we just spent an hour just walking around the parking lot afterwards oh like yeah it was, it was so as you can pass out yeah yeah yeah, yeah and the turkey as well day. like I was like I'm not going near that yeah yeah yeah, but people stuck around, you know, it seems like it wasn't uh, too uh, sleep inducing. But yeah. our friend Grant, I, I don't know if you know Grant Gordon or not, but he we drew inspiration from actually his father's funeral. Okay. They catered the entire fair from Katz's and it was just like, this is this is a really great thing to do for a party of people. You yeah. Know? I yeah. hope you don't mind if we use it for the wedding. And yeah, it was, I mean, it was just a celebratory food Thing, it, it was kind of like thank you for coming to New York, and this is a New York based thing. That yeah. was the yeah. I mean, I got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, what better place that is yeah. New York City? Yeah. It's such, I think Katz's is like I've Pastrami been saying this beer. a lot this week, but like it's so special that place because it ho- somehow like does it all. Like it manages to be like the easy place that people go for lunch if they work around there. It's also the place that like people will drive in from out of town mm-hmm. to go to as a tourist, and it's also just like really good. Like I it, didn't know they did catering, so that was yeah. that was a yeah. surprise. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and that uh, that venue, uh, the Tamaqua Marina, was uh, we were really pleased that it happened to be right there next to the marine park for us because it's such a unique space in terms of like why does this exist here? How yeah. can it support 500 people when every week we that that was open to the public? Like we didn't close that down. Like there were just that was the number of patrons. There was like one or two people there at all times, and then us. Okay, so let's clarify, because I, I was one of the first people to arrive to Tamaqua. Yeah. And I know Chris Tupino was there, and he yeah. was kind of, like, helping out with the food. Yeah. When I walked in the door, the owner woman, or whoever she was, yeah. was setting up the table and trying to get the get it ready to start putting the foods out. Yeah. And I said, how's everything going? And she said, well, we just found out that this was happening, so we're dealing with that the best that we can. Yeah. Did you guys really not tell them that you no, were showing up with all these people? No, this is great. So we're talking so, about the love bubble. Yeah. There was a, this was the thing uh, yeah. you can go so we went in there like two months ago <laughs> and we went in and we went in on a sunday and we met this bartender named tad and we were like hey, oh, tad. you know this place is really cool we're getting married in a couple months right down the street at marine park and we're thinking we might want to come here after like do you guys do that and he was like yeah you can just come by i'm the bartender sundays just come by and we were like, okay, but it's like probably gonna be like a hundred people. And he was like, sounds cool. Yeah, no, there's plenty of room. It'll be fun. <laughs> so we were like, okay. So then two weeks ago, we went back because we were like, that's too good to be true. No, there's well, no he way. said, just come back when it's closer. You know, oh, right. we that's asked true. all we asked all the questions. We yeah. hung out there for a few hours. It was the, basically the closest we did to a wedding tasting. Mm-hmm. We went to the Tamaqua and had like Stella's. Okay. And just hung out with Captain Jack, their cat, that was like the sweetest cat. That cat was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And just, People were very excited about the cat. It was, yeah. it was it, I mean, to be clear, it seemed too good to be true. But yeah. we were like, whatever, this is the guy, yeah, you know, and, we and like, we'll come back in a couple weeks and whatever. Yeah, so we did. So we went back exactly two weeks before the wedding. And there was one person in there, and they were watching whatever that zombie show is. The True Walking Dead, Dead or, the, yeah. the, the return, or the new one. Yeah, yeah. Fear the Fear Walking, the Walking Dead. Dead. It yeah. was just the two of them watching that. And we were like, hey. so it must have been like a Sunday night. It was a Sunday night. Yeah, just scoping yeah. it out. Just How busy is it? Scoping it out. And we were like, hey, Todd, I don't know if you remember us, but you know, we had talked about coming in here after our wedding. It's coming up. It's only two weeks from today. Um, you know, and he was like, sure, 
cool. See you then. And <laughs> then he was, he was like, like hey. I think it sounds like maybe we'll need another bartender. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, And whatever. we were like, are you sure? Like, do you need anything from us to like plan that? Are you sure? Like, it's just fine. We can just come in. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. No problem. And we're like, okay. So yeah, that was our understanding was that there was like, we had checked like multiple times with him, you know, is this fine? You're sure? Like we can just come and that's not a problem. And then we ended up giving Chris um, a credit card because we were like, you know, go in, get people like start it, you know, it's like cash bar into the night. But until we get there, just like pay for people's drinks so that they can like do it quickly if they really are gonna have like just two bartenders on, like then they can just like grab the drinks and give them to people and not have to worry about cashing out and whatever. And then it was like 20 minutes after we had gotten married, my mom comes over to where we were saying goodbye to some people and is like, hey, I just got a call from your friend Chris and he said there's like something happening. I guess you should call him back. So I called back Chris and he was like, yeah, they're really confused about the card. And I don't know, they're saying they don't know. They just, everything's, they're being very nice, but it's like, Everyone seems confused. They had no idea you were coming. <laughs> uh, well, so then I get on the phone with the woman who was like the manager and her name was Pat, but I thought she said, hi, this is Tad, but it was a woman. And I was like, is everyone there named Tad? <laughs> <laughs> but it was Pat. And I was like, hi, what, um, yeah, like, what's happening? And she was like, well, we had to get, you know, we had to get two girls on the floor because we can't have this we need people on the floor and you know you, we had to get three bartenders and you know there's a fee for the floor to rent the space and we were like i was like okay um well you know we've spoken to tad i don't know this is fine like i'm happy to give you whatever you need like thank you for figuring it out but we've also spoken to tad and he said we could just come in it was fine like we did we did like okay this through him and she was like Tad doesn't know what he's doing. Tad doesn't know. He messes everything. He messed it all up. He messed it all up. Oh, we didn't no. know anything. We didn't know till just now. And I was like, okay. But like then I thought, and I felt really bad. They sounds like they up, didn't they, not. It sounds like they had they people come in. Oh, they most work. certainly knew. They were what she's told there's you was no, not because yeah. absolutely we were no not way expecting decorations and they decorated the whole place. All they those flowers, the, the things on the ceiling, those most, weren't there. Most That's Sundays amazing. it was literally yeah. just Tad. Like yeah. they had six people working. Okay. There's no way they were that they found out like 15 minutes before and like slapped that together. Like they were super prepared. Okay, Pat, drama queen. She was just being dramatic and like rude like that yeah. was rude for her to say that to, to you like, yeah however us. we well so okay wait, i guess i'm jumping ahead basically yeah. we were like okay we need to go get money because they wanted yeah. it in cash yeah now yeah. also and did, let's and be clear I, I mean this is the only part we'll say about the wedding it was six hundred dollars yeah. for two bartenders and a space like this is not that's a freaking nothing. no it's nothing in new york city obviously we were like that's fine that's an ice like, fee totally i know <laughs> absolutely yeah. no we were a hundred percent but of course i don't have 600 dollars cash on me no. so we're in our wedding apparel <laughs> at the mobile, the Bala Market mobile on taking Avenue out U, cash. taking out $600 in cash, $200 at a time, yeah. right before we get to our wow. reception. Yeah. Oh my God. And then, uh, yeah. And yeah. then when we got there, she was like, oh my God, hi, congratulations, yeah, no. great. Well she was done. super Have with the program time. from and that they were on. great. Yeah. Um, well, you I handed her a, little, a $600 I tip at that point. I am a little upset that they like, told people that they had no idea because yeah. that does make us look stupid and like we clearly planned it out they obviously like if anyone would think about that a little more like yeah the entire outdoor space was like decorated with flowers like yeah, that was they had not all the little how tables. they decorated okay. normally so you heard yeah. it here folks mike if and jesse yeah. absolutely <laughs> prepared that <laughs> it wasn't definitely. a surprise to the staff it we didn't just gorilla bomb no. No. to Macla Bar and yeah. whatever. No. In the no. Marina. If we had done that, it literally would have just been Tad. Yeah. And he would have been like. That would have been a shit show. Yeah. He would have been like, Sounds okay. like Tad couldn't sure. have handled it. I only saw Tad once and he looked like he was struggling. I think he went home sick. And like he was coming out from the back, and he, he just was like yeah. sweating or just. He wasn't you know. the old like pirate captain guy, was he? No. He? He's kind of he's a silver hair but yeah. fresh younger face. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. No, but I mean, he's also like he was so nice to I us. Was so when nice. We went in, and like he was part of the reason we had it there because he was like so welcoming and friendly and. Yeah. We it was a cool venue. Yeah, we should have cool. given him our number, but also. 
they should have asked for our number. Yeah. That would have been the thing to, you yeah. know, to do. And to give you a heads up that there's going to be like a deposit or some sort of oh, fee. Oh, of course. I mean, that I goes without saying. Like, yeah. he just, he had I no idea. He just had yeah. no idea. I think he really just thought it was fine. And we yeah. were like, Tad just lives okay. in like one of the boats parked in the harbor right there. Yeah. yeah. Just like, yeah. I think <laughs> rolls out of bed to pour a beer for whichever for boat the guy gets off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. But the but, space itself I mean, is super I'm glad, cool. Honestly, like, the alternative to like you know her complaining a little bit before we got there would have been them not actually like truly not being, not being prepared, prepared and not knowing and like us getting there and them turning us away or like you know or it being like a complete shit show or something like so i'm i'd rather have what did happen where like we were a little caught off guard and just had to go get some money and, it was like, probably the most money that they've made like, the oh, oh god in yeah. such a long time Absolutely. you guys brought in a sure. huge crowd of people that were hitting the bar regularly the I'm entire positive time. that yeah. it, they made so much yeah. more money i think she just had a lot of pride in her space because yeah. yeah. really we were just part of the reason we had Chris and alexa go there was just so they could set it up for us yeah, yeah. and instead they just like took over yeah, yeah. setting it and all up and they did a great job yeah they did yeah no and she was great so everyone had a blast so that was that yeah <laughs> and it's funny that that was the first phone call that i got as a married lady, <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and we were like oh i guess uh i guess this is our first like problem solving yeah together yeah. officially and it's fine. yeah not yeah yeah there was just a, the only thing was just that little bit of anxiety we're like are they not serving people right yeah, now we were a little and then we called up chris and like what's going on like... and chris of course was like no no no, it's fine everything's fine yeah which i i guess is another one of those things i guess we'll just have to believe people that that was the case you know yeah you yeah. messaged you guys were like 10 minutes out and i was like there's a long line for the food people yeah. are already eating you were like awesome yeah yeah so it was good yeah yeah <laughs> And then I think I just want to call out one more thing that I feel like the thing I'm most pleased with in terms of like our, our making it happen, aside from the fact that we like got to the wedding at 7.15 and we said we were going to get there, like we hit like all the times. So I felt yeah. good about that, um, was incorporating the bells into the ceremony because yeah. <laughs> I felt like that was both an opportunity for people to like participate and an opportunity to fill in any dead air or like, you know, we were the mic was cutting in and out, which like normally would bother me and it didn't bother me at all. Yeah. But like when it was happening, people would just be like, ding, 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 you know, we're here. Everything's cool, you know, yeah. and just a way to sonically like continue the bubble, like lift everything up, you know. It was so cute and they kept going off the entire time. Yeah. That was a very, very great idea. Yeah. I actually, I, I have the bell on the coffee table because I thought we were going to be at the house. And oh. I was gonna oh. <laughs> like, it's, it's, nice. it's over there, but yeah. oh, it was really cute. cute. And they were all a variety of bells. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We picked the, we, well, we bought all the bells the place had okay. and then picked the ones that sounded best together. Oh, nice. And then, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we wanted there to be a variety. We wanted there to be kind of like a, Harmony. And the little the little gift bags they put on everyone's blankets and chairs. Also, it seemed like you could see it was a little sustenance thing yeah. that you guys have had during your journey. It was like yeah. a little energy calcium. Energy goo choos. Yeah. It was um, banana chips and nuts and like an assort like everyone had cashews different and almonds. Yeah. And then meat sticks. Yeah. Like yeah. little jerky. Like yeah. jerky. Yeah. yeah. Just something to tie it over. And tiny Gatorades and, and tiny bars. Gatorades <laughs> and tiny bars. Yeah. Those yeah. were, I don't know if this was like really communicated, but the blue Gatorade is what I always go for, and the pink vitamin water is what Mike always goes for. That's so good. they were like our, the ones we like the best. Yeah. yeah I, it, also, for the people that didn't get to go to the, the family meeting, kind of pre. I want to say rehearsal, yeah. like picnic yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, that you guys even brought in little foods that were like tiny little sushi rice, like seaweed things, yeah. and yeah. other like little Greek pastry things. Yeah, and, yeah. They, and you said that they were, they they were, kind of inspired by the things that you eat on your walks. Yeah, yes, yeah. They were all from um, from Industry City, the like food place that they have there. There's Japan Village, which is where we got the little rice balls from, and then this is Hadi's which is where we got the like pastries from, the yeah. like uh, savory pastries. And yeah, they're all things that like are an easy like grab and go that you can like eat while walking. It was cute. Um, yeah, yeah we, I liked that a lot. We thought about doing like, when we were planning that, we were thinking like, how do we do like a park catered thing? And we were like, 
Mike was suggesting Italian food and we were thinking about like pizzas or whatever. And then we were like, oh, you know what? Like things that we eat while walking would be perfect because then people can just grab it and eat it while picnicking. Don't need tables or silverware. But it's also like a glimpse into kind of totally. your journey, which yeah, is yeah. awesome. It was really yeah. cute. It was a yeah. good touch. I mean, that's what we tried to do with everything that we provided people was try and pair it in some way with what we were doing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think every, and, and we had, I guess the last little touch that was like our um, special, like about us is that we had um, the people playing music at the ceremony were friends that Mike's known for a really long time, but that like we've gone to see them play. They're already, a, they're not a band to, anymore actually. They're all in their own bands separately now, but they were a band together with a few other people. And it felt really special to have like these people that we've gone to see play music so many times, like asking them to come. We've made music videos with them, for them. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. So yeah. It, was a, it was a nice thing. So and that it, wasn't necessarily like related to this last year of walking, but like it felt special to have them um, It was beautiful music. It was before. perfect. Yeah, they did yeah, great. they did a really good job, I yeah. think. Yeah. Special wedding, guys. Good job. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank Thanks. you very much. When do you leave for the honeymoon? What's the... July 5th. July 5th. Yes, yeah. so we have a couple weeks here to just get resettled in whatever this is. Yeah. yeah. Jessie's got to figure out what it's like not being at her studio for three weeks. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of a big task. And I'll just tie up as many loose ends as possible. This, I'll probably make a decision to do a couple of project related things, figure out what those are. I mean, I've got to edit this and put that out, but I'll have like 10 days to figure it out. Speaking of editing, do you, you've become like a master editor now after like a year of this, <laughs> right? Like, uh, I mean, it's definitely become a part of the routine. I'm not sure what that's going to feel like. It's going to, you know, just so much bandwidth is coming off the books. You yeah. Know? So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to not doing that anymore. Oh, okay. Um, I, was like, not, I was like, do you see a career now? Like, oh, I mean, video no, games, I'm, like me, I'll do editing? Well, that's, you know, that's how I got in the door at the video game company was from editing. Okay. And uh, so I, en I enjoy editing. I, this type of editing is pretty basic, not a lot of creativity that goes into it, mm -hmm. but it's also time consuming. Yeah. So I, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's all kind of part of what uh, the future looks like. This is, uh, for those watching, those that have been regular watchers, this is uh, kind of a, a capstone episode, you know? I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like after, after we come back from Vermont. No promises. I mean, I think there, there could be episodes that we do that are like uh, more reflections on big portions of the project, you know? Uh, like the clothing or the podcast itself or, I, or, you know, like... I mean, we've been doing this portion of the project called Use of Force this whole year. That's right. And, like, that's the thing that we've kept up with recording every single week, but have that something that there's, like, so much more to do on that, so yeah. we might potentially... Yeah, that's an that audio tomorrow. exclusive, so many people might not have seen that, but that's, like, on our Spotify and Podbean and things like that, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where we go from here, but uh, right now, we won't be doing this type of thing again. I don't think. You yeah. know, like yeah. uh, I feel like rather than try and do a second season, just keep it all as one contained project mm -hmm. and uh, feel like a cohesive whole. But uh, but yeah, I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of a lot of thinking, and uh, if you know, if there's somebody out there that sees this mm -hmm. in the future that uh, just wants to have us be the hosts and then somebody else can edit it hey sign me up you know like but it takes an extra like 10 to 14 hours a week to to do this so i don't know if that's what i want to yeah. do right now at least until maybe whatever our next big thing is and then you know put it make it part of the routine again but but for now there's a lot other of other different types of documentation i think we're ready to move on to so so find them on whatever their handles are, even if you're watching this like years from now and you're like, oh my God, they didn't know That's what right. they could have had and yeah. I know exactly right. what it could be. Yeah. Find them. Yeah, yeah. find us. Yeah, exciting things could be happening and I'm sure will be That's happening. Right. Well, that's the wonderful thing about all of this stuff is that it's, a, it's as permanent a documentation as you can get. You know, I don't perceive YouTube going out of business anytime no. soon. Even if they do, I have all of the videos saved, you know, but like yeah. this is, this is a thing that we tried to structure in a way that it would be relevant well beyond uh, 
2020, 2021. Yeah. So, so cool. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I guess the, the only other video that we do have planned that'll come out is going to be like a condensed version, the live stream that Ariel did with us, the eight hour live stream. He's going to condense that down into a more like quick to watch yeah. little video yeah. from the day. So that'll be the, yeah. the next thing. But then, yeah, after that, it's wide open. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. And if any of you have any suggestions for what we should do, I'm not going to say we're necessarily going to do it, but we'd love to hear what you think and, uh, and we'll take into consideration. I mean, we're, we, we've did all this New York stuff now. What does that manifest as, you know? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. You guys, you guys usually like. Did you do like Arkansas, like a walking trip, and then you did like Washington, like Washington walking trip? We did Vermont, we did <clears throat> um, San Diego to LA, and we did the Pacific Northwest. I mean, yeah. there's so much more to walk and see. Yeah. So much more world to walk. It's yeah, true. yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's goodbye. Thank yeah. you so much for watching this episode, for watching for an entire year. If you've kept up with us, we. Yeah appreciate it just like we've appreciated every other time and and thank uh, you to matt for being our oh my god it's been a pleasure it's been yeah. so fun yes. to watch you guys and thank you for having me i feel yeah. i feel so honored yeah way to go thanks good job kids yeah. <laughs> you did this damn thing well for now as the bell chimes take care <laughs>